How's it going? I'm Neil Capron. I work for the Android Kernel Integrity Team, and we're looking at uh, enabling modern BPF in Android and how it incorporates in our security model. So, a little bit of background. The Android basically is not modern. So we don't have libbpf. We don't have a, 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 an updated BCC or BP, BPF tool. We have a custom or curated library, I say that loosely, to uh, enable BPF development that was created prior to libbpf. And really, it doesn't have any of the modern functionality. We don't have core. We don't have the libbpf helpers. We don't have BPF trace or, you know, we are very manual BPF functionality. Oh, sorry. So some of our goals, obviously, we want to join this century in, in BPF. We want to enable core. We want the modern development mechanisms and capabilities that BPF offers. The other piece that my focus is, is enabling vendors to use BPF. And I'll go into a little more on the different roles in the Android ecosystem here in a second. And ultimately, while I'm focused on BPF trace points, we're at a point where it's a pivotal, pivotal time where we're going from this very archaic, uh, outdated system to looking at, at bringing us up to speed here. So we want to make sure that we do that in a way that's compatible with upstream and we can, can start contributing back upstream. So some concepts that we need to understand about Android that make it fairly unique. We have a, a standard C library called Bionic. Uh, each user plus application combination has a dedicated UID. So that's, you know, a, a, I'm new to Android. That was one of the things that kind of sent me for a loop. But a, a user could be the person using the device. It could also be a work profile. And so that's how one of the security mechanisms that basically allows compartmentalization on the on the file system there. Uh, standard, we have two kernel versions per release. The latest Android 14 has a 515 kernel branch and a 6.1, so we are behind upstream a little bit. A lot of the efforts of, of my team has been to minimize that, that timeline gap. Um, and it's important to know that older devices can upgrade to the latest OSs with their previous kernels. So this is some of the challenging uh, or it, it poses challenges with that. A couple of the other terms and acronyms, we have ACK, which is Android Common Kernel. Basically take an upstream kernel and have a series of patches that go on top of it, uh, the generic kernel image, and then particularly we're interested in the KMI. So this is the ABI stability mechanism that we've uh, worked with vendors to define for each kernel branch. So Android 5.14, 5.15, and Android 14 6.1 have different KMIs. Uh, and going forward, the Android 15 6.1 kernel could have a different KMI than 14.6.1. The other thing to note is we do have DM Verity based uh, file systems where the BPF programs are stored. So we trust the source of the BPF programs. So this is one of the differences compared to a lot of the, the security mechanisms that I've looked at. Uh, on, on the mailing list so far. The other piece to note is we have a variety of architectures that we support. You can see ARM v7 is kind of being deprecated, and uh, we do support RISC V going forward. Sorry, RISC V 64. So, some of our stakeholders, we kind of have the two sides of things here. We have de debugging and development. Uh, that's, again, a, a debug enabled device. And that's going to be uh, uh, the engineers, performance, test engineers, et cetera. And then we have this release telemetry and functionality side of things. And this is BPF programs that are running on production devices. And so that's the focus of this talk. It's not so much the dynamic tracing and debugging, while I would love to get there eventually. My focus right now is that release side of things and modernizing that. So with the release side, we have the system OS level programs, which are part of AOSP are released yearly or going forward uh, quarterly releases and updated quarterly. Uh, the networking code is in what we call an Apex, and this is a redistributable package that's distributed via uh, the Android Play Store monthly. 
and it runs on old devices so all the way back to 4.9 kernels. So that's one of, been one of the challenging, another challenging piece of uh, updating libvpf is we have these old kernels. Uh, additionally, so we, do, we have the SOC and device manufacturers, and I'm referring to them as vendors in this, in this conversation. And my goal is to allow them more access into BPF and uh, being able to really use this powerful technology. Some of the security restrictions we have in Android for BPF. Right now we have a single BPF loader. Uh, basically it's a, a, an application that runs in early init and walks the file system looking uh, in these specific locations for classes of programs to run. Uh, a little more on that in a second. And I think a lot of the reason for the single loader was at the time when it was implemented, it required Capsys admin, and we couldn't really expose that to a lot of user space applications. Um, it's one shot, so once it loads the programs, you can't continue to, uh, or you can't load additional programs, it'll exit, and it's kind of done for that boot. There are many SE Linux restrictions. Um, I don't need to go into those right now, but we have SE Linux control on that. Uh, this next bullet point is actually incorrect. We're working on that. And uh, the BPF program types are restricted based on their source. So looking forward, oh, I'm missing, it's, it, it'll come later. But basically, the networking code has the, the most use cases enabled, system is limited, and the vendors are limited to socket filters right now. Um, and of course, F entry, F exit must be must remain disabled on release devices. So this is a block diagram of the BPF loader application. You can see those different uh, ELF sources on the left side there. So we've got system in green, networking in blue, and vendor in orange. And basically, the BPF loader opens them, compares them, compares their program type with an allow list based on where that ELF file is, is located on the file system. So again, we trust the programs are provided by a verified source, but we want to control where they, what they can do and where they are attached, ultimately. And then you can see that uh, user space, Android specific library, we'll call it. Um, so this is another representation of those, those file systems. So you can see these are, these are the different pieces that can be updated independently on an Android phone. So kernel, obviously, uh, the vendor BPF part programs are separate. And then the system, the, currently the BPF loader is part of the AOSP Android release, but it relies on the BPF library, which is in the networking apex um, for that, that loading piece. Similarly, the vendor programs relied on that, that BPF library. So that required a lot of stability and maintenance looking back all the way to the 4.9 kernels and these really old devices. So that's been one of the pieces that we've been working on lately. And then obviously the system and networking programs underneath that. These, these are our supported program types. We have a variety of networking pieces, a couple system, K-probe, socket filter, and trace points are enabled for system and only socket filter is enabled for vendors right now, and they requested K-probe, perf event, and trace point access. So some of the other challenges that we encounter, boot time, because it is a single-threaded application uh, that starts in early init, it's blocking a lot of other stuff from running. Um, we need to be very cognizant of how we are blocking the system there. Uh, additionally, memory overhead's a, a pretty major concern we run on you know, phones which may have a decent amount of memory, but then watches or other devices which are very limited and constrained. The, the big piece that is a challenge is that the ABI compatibility between kernel, user space, and the BPF objects that can all be independently updated. And of course, security is a, a primary concern as well. So looking at enabling core in Android, we could do, you know, uh, a custom Android-specific library. I absolutely do not want to do that. Um, that uh, would be a maintenance nightmare, but we could optimize it for a specific use case. I don't think this is the way to go. We could take libbpf, integrate it into the existing BPF loader. Um, it doesn't solve the, the boot time problem. It could cause a significant increase in memory usage due to BTF data uh, associated with each, 
with each object. And uh, again, it doesn't resolve that compatibility issue between the different programs, libraries, and, and systems. And then the, the approach that I've been considering lately is basically a, what I'm calling a native libbpf approach where developers and system integrators should be able to use whatever library they want, have the, the same sys, syscall interface, and then the big thing that we need to implement there is an access control mechanism to control where the, the program types and the attach points that they can access from the kernel side. And uh, there may be other approaches. I'm, that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm here to learn and hopefully uh, get some input from the, the experts in the community. So uh, I, I appreciate your help there. Can you go back to the slide where you say access control mechanisms? Do you, does your access space mechanism, uh, control mechanism need to be in user space? Could you not ship a PPF LSM policy that does the access control there? That's what I'm uh, getting to, is how, okay. how to move it into the kernel space, hopefully. So yes, cool. that's, my, awesome. that's my plan. Um, so attach point access control. Um, basically, we need to verify that the trace, part, trace points are part of that KMI stability layer that we have. Um, and again, it varies between kernel branches, so we need to have it updatable. Um, and it's important to understand that after a kernel release, you can have KMI additions, but you can't change or, or remove things. Uh, so again, we could continue to maintain that, that user space allow list and extend it to access or uh, uh, attach points as well, but it doesn't necessarily solve the, the scalability issue that we are encountering. So the, the next piece is BPF program, kernel module based access control. Um, this is kind of an iteration. Some of the constraints that we have are working with existing devices and existing kernels that are in development. Um, I know there has been a lot of talk on, on the mailing list regarding uh, gatekeeper applications and the tokens. I really like the token pieces but I think we will long-term need to extend that to access control unless I'm missing a piece there um, in order to integrate it in this mechanism. Um, and I'm not as familiar with the LSM side of things, so I unfortunately was double booked today and I missed the update there. I will follow up uh, when, the, when the videos are posted. But So short-term, we need to resolve this you know, on the 5.15 and 6.1 kernel is a challenge. So short term, one of the proposals that I've come up with is basically hooking into BPF program load and BPF program attach and doing the, uh, the attach paint, uh, the allow list verification there um, in the kernel that would enable the, the libbpf to, or whatever library to be used in user space. Um, but we need to ultimately compare it back to the source of the kernel or the source of the, the program that's being loaded. And so that's where I need to uh, examine and investigate that of how we, whether populate a map or um, have another program on the file system. So the, the first approach is the, the user space approach. You can see from the, the last piece, basically, we broke out the network BPF loader to the side there uh, so that they can continue maintaining support for the old devices with their, their current uh, solution. Uh, BPF loader has been updated in this diagram to use libbpf to enable that core step, but again, it's a very linear flow still. Um, obviously, we, we can look into parallelizing, parallelizing that as well. There are challenges around that. Um, and then we the other piece that was added here is the attach point allow list in the BPF loader application. So this is the native libbpf approach that I'm pursuing right now. Um, you can see, again, we have our colors. The green is system. Vendor is orange, and then blue is off to its side in its, its apex there. So this really allows the developer uh, flexibility of using whatever library. It resolves the compatibility story of uh, trying to load a vendor application with potentially a different library-based BPF loader or a different system library there. And then the new piece is that access control BPF program in the kernel there. So um, yeah. That's, that's the core of my proposal. I, I wanna kind of get some feedback around that. I do have some um, open questions for both, but uh, yeah, before we get started on those, are there any questions for me?
Well, I just want to say that well, uh, I totally support this last variant where like libpf is embedded into the application and that's what we in our internal at meta the internal like android use cases actually are going with uh, so if you can pull this through that would be great probably yeah so this is my goal i think there are some security roadblocks between me and reaching this um, ultimately we need to have a thorough security review around this we need to determine what's what's viable for an allow list what's not and and you know, really figure out best, best practices there. So that's gonna be my next hurdle is really engaging with the Android security team on that. Yeah, just very small remark, like in your table of uh, program types that you want to uh, enable, you have trace point, but you don't have a raw trace point. I would recommend to look into that because it's more performant, kind of, it uses the same infrastructure, but it's more performant. So like if you're enabling trace point, you should probably enable raw trace point. But the, also the, the question is like you're saying access control and like uh, proc attach and stuff like that. Like what, well, two questions here, like how much you can backport? Sorry, can you repeat How that? much, like those 5.15 and 6.1, can you still backport some newer patches into that? Potentially, yes. Be, well, because like whatever we add, right? Like you'll need to bring it to older kernels. But then the, the second part of the question is like, what do you think you need? What, what would I need to backport or? No, what would you need like to add to the kernel to do the success control like on attachment and all this stuff? Because I think we, we have a bunch of LSM hooks uh, and we are actually like in the latest kernel, we are updating them, like making them token aware and like, placed in, in slightly better okay. uh, place. So, you know, stuff like that. So at this point, I don't know what I need yet. So it's awesome to hear that the hooks are there. I will definitely uh, do some investigation there and um, you know, follow up on the mailing list. So that's awesome. I mean, we're, you mentioned a particular thing in your slide that said reading the BPF source code in the kernel or access to the source code. Uh, BPF pro load, you can hook and you can basically uh, walk through the instructions. You can filter on what you're attaching to yeah. uh, at that point as well. So your, your, your KMI can just be a map that your LSM program can read and see which access points you're allowed to access based on which uh, 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 which program type. So I think this is, it can be done with this, but it can be done with an LSM program that you load very early on at boot. Okay. Is there a recommendation of this first an LSM program? I, I am not familiar with LSM. So this is, you know, new new to me. Um, but if you have a recommendation there, I'd definitely- you, you can, we can find a hook and we create the recommendation, right? Okay. <laughs> there is no recommendation yet. Perfect. Thank you. Um, question from your uh, slides where you mentioned like vendors and they requested this or that type. Can you share like more details like why they want, let's say this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, no, next. Yeah, why they want KPRO performant and trace point? This is just observability or what? So behind? to be honest, I've been asking that question on a lot of things. Um, there's been, uh, there's been little information, but not extensive information on why they're trying to do or what they're trying to do with these things. I think ultimately a lot of it is based on uh, dynamic tracing for performance monitoring or things like that. Um, and ultimately, I don't know that K-Probe is the right answer for the, uh, the vendor piece um, because it, it really opens up access to the kernel. So. Um, I have concerns around that. I don't know that we will enable all of these. Again, I'm, I'm focused on TracePoint right now, um, but that's one of my questions is, what should we allow? And it sounds like raw TracePoint, are there other ones that you think are reasonable for this model? Um, yeah. Um, can you elaborate some more on the boot time issue? It's basically that you want to have the enforcement piece first before everything else comes up, right? Yeah, before. so due to, and actually if I go back to the, well, this is fine. Uh, due to the nature of the, the networking programs of bandwidth mo monitoring and, and other functionality, they need access to them early on in the boot system. And since we have a one shot single, uh, single program here, um, it had to be basically be as early as they are, or the networking side of things need to be. Um, yeah, so that's that's why it has to be so early. Now, could we extend the user space functionality to have multiple phases? 
yes, most likely. Um, that may be a, an easier uh, approach to, to uh, deal with security um, as far as breaking that up. Um, but ultimately, I don't know that that is the right approach because ultimately, I imagine BPF usage is going to continue to scale. And so even no matter where you put it in the system, it's, it's going to continue to be a problem there. So. Anybody else from this side of the room? All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.